Hello learners, welcome to our today's lesson. My name is teacher Alice and we are going to start on form 2 chemistry. So we are going to look at the first topic, the first topic of form 2 chemistry will, will be our lesson one. So the topic is the structure of the atom and the periodic table. That is our lesson today. So what we are going to start with, we are going to define terms. So we we'll begin by definition of terms. The first term we are going to define is an atom. So what is an atom? We say that an atom is the smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. That is the definition of an atom the smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. We say an atom is made up of small particles, known as they are, they are referred to as subatomic particles. So they are three, three subatomic particles of an atom. These are protons, neutrons, and electrons. Then an atom, the structure of an atom is contains two parts or two regions. So it is made up of two regions. One is the nucleus. So the nucleus is a small central region where protons and neutrons are occupied. This is where we find protons and neutrons. So they are inside the nucleus. So the protons and neutrons are collectively known as the nucleons. The other region of an atom is known as the energy level. This is the region surrounding a nucleus where electrons occupy. So for example here, we have an atom. We can see where the nucleus is. It is a very small central region here. This is where we find protons and neutrons. So that part is known as the nucleus. Again, this outer region here where we find our electrons or where electrons are occupied is known as the, the energy levels. For example, for example, uh, an atom like helium, this is the structure of helium. So inside the nucleus, this is the small region here. This is where we find the protons and neutrons of helium. So helium has two protons and two neutrons. So at the nucleus, inside the nucleus, this is where we find the protons and neutrons of helium. The surrounding of the nucleus is where we find the two electrons of helium. So we can see that helium has two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons. So protons and neutrons are inside the nucleus, and then the two electrons are in the energy levels. Then we can look at the characteristics of the subatomic particles of an atom. We start with the proton. So we are going to look at the subatomic particle its relative mass and its electrical charge. So the first one is the proton. Proton has a relative mass of one. Then it has a positive charge. So a proton, a proton is positively charged. For an electron, an electron has a relative small mass. This is one over 1840 or 1 over 1, 1,840, that is the mass of an electron. An electron is negatively charged. Then we have the neutron. The neutron is the third subatomic particle of an atom. It has a relative mass of 1, and it is, it has, it is neither positive and it is, or negative, but it is neutral. So a neutron is neutral, that is its charge. It has no charge, that is, it is not positive and it is not negative. So it is neutral, it has no charge. 
So hydrogen atom, this is the first element. This is the hydrogen atom. It has one proton, one electron, and it has no neutron. An atom is said to be electrically neutral. This is due to the equal number of protons and electrons. So we have to note that in an atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. That is very key. Then the neutron in the nucleus contribute to the stability of the nucleus. So because it has no charge, it will, it will make the, the neutron, the nucleus that is to be, to be stable. Move to the next slide. We are now going to look at the atomic number and the mass number. So what are what is an atomic number? What is mass number? What do we refer to when we talk about atomic number? So atomic number, this is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. So atomic number is equal to the number of protons. For example, if we take sodium metal, sodium metal, sodium has 11 protons in the nucleus. Therefore, the atomic number of sodium is 11. That is what we mean. So the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. Again, what is a mass number? A mass number this is the sum of the protons and neutrons in an atom of an element. So when we add the neutrons and the protons, we get the mass number. So by definition, mass number is the protons and neutrons, the sum. For example, sodium has 11 protons and 12 neutrons in its nucleus. Therefore, its mass number will be now 11 protons plus 12 neutrons to give us 23. So the mass number of sodium is 23. Both, both mass number and atomic number can be written along with the symbol of an element as shown below. For example, if we take an element, let's call it element X. So this is the symbol of the element X. Then where we have M, this M is our superscript. This is where we are going to have the mass number. Where we have N, this is where we are going to have the atomic number. So this is how we can represent uh, the symbol of an element alongside with its mass number and the atomic number. The superscript is the mass number. The subscript is the atomic number. So in this table here, we have the first 20 elements in the periodic table. So the first one is hydrogen. You can see its symbol is capital H. The second one is helium, capital H, small e, lithium, capital L, small i, beryllium, capital B, small e, boron, capital B, carbon, C, nitrogen, N, oxygen, O, fluorine, F, we have neon, we have sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, and calcium. Yes, we can see the state symbols. So when we are writing the state symbol, we should be keen on which letter is capital and which one is small. Then here we have alongside the, along that row, for example, if we start with hydrogen, we can see that the number of electrons in hydrogen is one, number of protons is one. It has zero number of neutrons. We saw that hydrogen does not have, doesn't have neutrons in its nucleus. So the atomic number equal to the number of protons is one. Then the mass number, that is the sum of the protons and neutrons, one plus zero, which is giving us 
one. So the mass number of hydrogen is one. So if we have other missing gaps here. For example, if we look at boron, boron, we can see the number of electrons are missing. We have number of protons. So the number of protons is five. So from the definition of we we of an of a proton, we saw that protons are equal to electrons. So if the number of protons of boron is five, that means also the number of electrons will also be five. What about the neutrons? So we saw that neutrons plus the protons will give us the what? The mass number. So if we have the mass number and we have the number of protons as five, how do we get the number of neutrons? So this would be 11 minus five to give us six. So the number of neutrons of boron is six. We look at magnesium. So let's fill these spaces in magnesium. So number of electrons are missing for magnesium. We have number of protons. Number of protons is equal to number of electrons. So we have 12 of here to indicate the mass, the number of electrons. So number of electrons is 12, number of protons is 12, number of neutrons is 12. So we get the atomic number. So we said the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. So if magnesium has 12 protons, its atomic number will also be 12. What about the mass number? The mass number we said is equal to number of protons plus number of neutrons. So if number of protons is 12, number of neutrons is 12, the mass number would be 12 plus 12, which is 24. So the mass number of magnesium is 24. So we can use that definition of atomic number, definition of mass number to fill all the missing to fill all the missing spaces here of number of either number of protons, number of electrons, number of neutrons, atomic number, or the mass number. So we are going to answer a question here. The question is an atom can be represented as follows. So the element is represented by the by letter K. Then we have 40 as the superscript and 18 as the subscript. So we are told to find out the atomic number of K. So what is the atomic number of K? Atomic number of K, we said the atomic number is the number that is down here, the subscript. So the atomic number of K will be 18. What is the mass number of K? The mass number we say the mass number is the superscript, the number that is up here. So the mass number of K will be 40. The number of protons of K, we say number of protons is equal to the atomic number. So if the atomic number is 18, the number of protons will also be 18. So number of protons will be 18. Number of electrons, we say number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. So if the protons are 18, the number of electrons will also be 18. The number of neutrons, how do we calculate neutrons? Given that the mass number is 40, so we said mass number, mass number is equals to the number of protons plus number of neutrons so we have the number of protons as as the number of protons are 18 neutrons are not given but we have the mass number as 40 so how do we get neutrons so neutrons is equals to 40 bring 18 to this other side minus 18 so this will give us 22 so the number of protons the number of neutrons of K will be 20, 22. So that is how we are calculating 
the atomic number, the mass number, the number of protons, the number of electrons, and the number of neutrons. So that is how we can approach such a question from the definition of terms, that is mass number and atomic number. So it is necessary not only to know the definition of those terms, but also to know how to calculate the mass number and the atomic number. So that marks the end of our lesson one. In our lesson two, now we are going to look at the periodic table, the electron configuration, and also the relative atomic mass of certain elements or, or yeah, from, of certain elements. So until next time, bye bye.